we're proposing four priorities that we feel should be included in this budget. If passed, these initiatives and reforms will lighten the load on hard-working Rhode Islanders. They will begin rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse in government programs. They will reduce the cost of repairing our schools so that every child has a safe, healthy, and supportive environment in which to learn. They will help stop the annual increases in property taxes that make it hard for average families to pay their bills and it will remove an impediment to business investment and expansion and the job growth that would accompany that. These four ideas are a small down payment on the reforms that need to take place, but they are strong and critical components of any responsible plan for the future prosperity of Rhode Island. And we are first going to address creating the Office of the Independent Inspector General uh, Representative Lancey is going to talk about that. Then Representative Bob Quattrochi is going to talk about giving an exemption to the prevailing wage for school repair. Representative Anthony Giarusso is going to talk about freezing and eliminating, eliminating the tangible personal property tax. And then I'll return for disability pension reform. Office of Inspector General. It's amazing how you look at one thing and then something else comes about. Um, this is an idea that started because my minority leader had raised an issue 10 years ago. She, our former head of finance, uh, Mr. Gallison, she raised an issue about an educational uh, enterprise that he was running. But there was no place for her to go with that. And so I started looking at this idea of an inspector general, which nine other states already have. The average tax bite nationally is around $5,500. States that have an IG, for the most part, are that or lower. And in fact, Florida, which has an IG not just for the state, but in all 30 departments, their tax bite is $3,635. Much less than the 55, and certainly much less than Rhode Island, which is $8,052. Establishing an office of Inspector General, I believe, will send a message to taxpayers and business leaders that Rhode Island will not accept rampant corruption and misuse of public offices. The plan that I'm talking about is one that calls for exempting all school districts across the state from having to pay prevailing wage rate on any new school construction or renovation projects. Multiple studies have shown, and recent real-world examples coming out of the state of Ohio, are providing that releasing communities and taxpayers of the burden of having to pay prevailing wage rates for school construction and renovation projects has an immediate and significant impact on reducing the cost of these projects. To give some background on prevailing wage law, otherwise known as Davis-Bacon laws, they've been around for over, uh, over 80 years and Rhode Island has one of the toughest ones in the nation. In essence, prevailing wage laws require the highest labor rates for construction trade work to be done uh, on state and federal construction projects by forcing taxpayers to pay union rates for all work performed. Prevailing wage laws, once, while once valuable during the Depression era 1930s to ensure unsuspecting laborers weren't taken advantage of, are today being used to take advantage of unsuspecting taxpayers by forcing them to pay the highest wage rates in the region while getting no additional value in return. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm here as a, a business owner, so I, I have some skin in the game, I, I, and I also understand the problem with the uh, TPP, as we would call it, tangible personal property tax. It, it is really a hurtful tax. When you think about it, with all the corporate welfare that's going on right now, you know, luring in companies that we're probably spending $100,000, $150,000, $200,000 per job with the tax breaks that we're giving these corporate welfare, just imagine if we did that, if we just eliminated this tangible personal property tax. You know, what kind of break will that give to the average Rhode Island business owner, small or large? You know, to give you a, perf a perfect example, I have a company in my district that relies heavily on machines. You know, he does, they print books and catalogs and things of that nature. And there's such great technology today that they could, they could exponentially increase their productivity with new machinery. And he's saying that there's several reasons. One of them is he's not getting a certain tax break for, for getting new machinery. 
but it's also the TPP. Now all of a sudden it starts your basis back to square one, and instead of him having a, a basis point of 100,000, now it might be a million. So it's, it's such a hurtful tax. And Rhode Island is, is again, you know, they always, the term outlier, we, we hear that all the time, and it's, it, frankly, it's getting very old, but we are outliers. There's, we're, we're number two in the country for the, for the amount of personal, uh, the tangible personal property tax. So those are the things that, that could help businesses. So if, 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 you're, if you're in a business and you don't have to worry about this particular stone in your shoe, so to speak, then you can reinvest and then you might even grow and then eventually you'll hire more people. Disability pension fraud is one component of skyrocketing property taxes. When somebody unjustly takes a disability pension, they take that money earlier, they take more of it, and they get other benefits like college tuition and medical insurance. That causes more cost on taxpayers. And if those pension funds keep getting drained, the taxpayers, because of the annual required contribution, have to put more in. There are 19 pension funds, municipal pension funds, that are in critical status right now, which means that repairing them is very, very hard. One in my, in my town of Coventry, it's the police pension fund, is only 14% funded. It's almost impossible to, to salvage it. But if we allow people to get in there and abuse our generosity, they're actually draining it faster than the taxpayers can afford to fill it back up. Union leaders vigorously oppose any kind of disability pension reform, and I don't get it. Because their active workers, their current retirees, depend on having solid, healthy pension, pension funds. So it works against the best interests of everybody, taxpayers, active employees, and retirees alike, when we don't tackle this really significant problem. And all of you, all of your, your news stations, the paper, you've all done a great job of unveiling some of the really bad abuses that go on. We see them all the time. We need to start tackling this and getting rid of it because it hurts everybody. And it is one of the reasons the, the, the constant increase in property taxes that, that is fueled by this is one of the reasons people are leaving Rhode Island because we're making it too hard for them to stay.